So, y'all want a composting toilet for your RV, schoolie conversion, van conversion, or off-grid cabin, but you don't want to have to take out a second loan just to get this glorified bucket to poop into. Well, no need to fear. I am going to show you today how we made our own do-it-yourself composting toilet for closer to $100 rather than $1,000. Hi there, and welcome to Healthy Trails. I'm Steven. And I'm Jackie. And together, we created Healthy Trails to bring wellness to you. We're traveling around the U.S. in our self-converted school bus and home on wheels to meet you where you're at and help guide you along your individual wellness journey. We can't wait to explore an adventure with you as we navigate together towards a happier and healthier life. You are interested in building your own do-it-yourself composting toilet. Um, basically, there are several do-it-yourself kits that you can purchase um, that might make this job a little bit easier. That would include that urine diverter, uh, possibly a ventilation fan, etc. We decided to go completely budget. Um, I think we made this with basically a five-gallon pail, milk jug, funnel, toilet seat, ratchet handle, and a cement mixer. That's it, guys. Uh, and with these materials, you can then make this as uh, budget or bougie as you like. Uh, we tried to play sort of the middle of the road uh, and balance both the cost effectiveness and practicality. So without further ado, I'll show you the toilet. All right, so here is our composting toilet. We basically built this frame with plywood. And if you open it up, it's on a hinge, just a regular piano hinge in the back. And inside that frame houses the five gallon pail, which we use to capture the solids. And then the milk jug, which is offset perfectly with the funnel for number one. And then we added in some tin, probably went a little bit overkill on this to make sure that uh, nothing was gonna be missing one of these two compartments from here. We've got some fresh sawdust here in the back and that cement mixer is the agitator. So the ratchet spins this and agitates that all up. And I can show you that in a second. Um, also, we painted underneath in the front uh, on the off chance that something would spill, that that wouldn't soak into the wood. So maybe a good idea to consider as well. Um, with that, this closes and again offsets so that when you open it up, you've got your toilet seat with the funnel here for your number one and the compartment in the back for your number two. And when you're done, you can take the ratchet, which fits there, and then spin that up and mix everything all nice like so. Uh, lastly, we also added in this bit and caulked around the outside to seal that top portion up uh, so that no smell was gonna be getting out of there either. And then there's a plexiglass window here so you can see how full that milk jug is uh, because you definitely do not want that overflowing on you uh, as well. And as for dumping, you can take that milk jug right out and we've got a lid that we just screw on that. You can take that into a restroom, dump it. And the back, this lid just pops right off. You can take that whole five gallon pail out and you can dump that in a bag and throw it away. Uh, we really wanted to try to set this up so that the bag could actually be inside the five gallon pail with the sawdust in it. Uh, we just found that when we did it that way, the agitator would just spin that bag up. So it uh, didn't quite work out for us, but if anyone has done a do-it-yourself option um, where you can just take that bag right out and go, let me hear about it in the comments. So uh, we couldn't quite figure that one out, um, but I'm sure someone out there has. So um, that's basically it. Okay, y'all, so we talked about 
the number one compartment, that liquid compartment, smelling a little bit. Which, honestly, when you look at it, that milk jug full of urine, it's sitting right there, right? So there are a few ways that we combat the smell. Uh, one of them, you can use this, some gray water uh, odor control. Now, I actually haven't gotten a chance to use this yet. Uh, on our first trip, we were out for granted only about four days. Uh, we did notice a little bit of a smell from the front. The back was pretty good. Uh, we didn't really notice anything certainly better still than your average porta potty. Uh, but it was the number ones that started to smell a little bit. To combat that, um, we did not use the odor control. We just got that actually after doing a little bit more research. So I will hop in the comments and let you know how that goes. But what we did do is we used a spray bottle, half water and half vinegar. And what you want to do then is after you go number one, you can just spray down the front, wash that out just a little bit. And that actually does make a pretty big difference, I think, in neutralizing that smell uh, quite a bit. You can also mix in a little bit of uh, lavender essential oils I've heard people using. So sort of a concoction of different, uh, different things to hopefully neutralize that smell just a little bit. Um, again, we'll let you know how that odor control is, but we've heard good things about that as well. Now, we also added in the extra waterproofing material around the outside. That's just because it's in our wet bath. So not necessarily necessary if you aren't planning on having that in a um, moist location. Uh, also, notice that we did not add any ventilation fan yet. Uh, we're going to test it out. We're going to try it out a little bit more before we go and start drilling more holes in the side of the bus. But if we do do that option, um, computer fans work great for that. So if you're interested, you can certainly try that out as well. They're super cheap, um, pretty efficient. So if we do that, I'll let you know, and that will be the option that we try to probably add in. Um, another thing that I thought about doing and we're going to test out first is that longer trap system. So if anyone has done it where their liquid waste is in a different location, maybe underneath the vehicle, and you can build a little bit of a trap to eliminate that smell, um, would love to hear if that worked out for you guys as well. Uh, again, we don't necessarily think it'll be necessary for us, but if it is, um, that's also an option that we considered. All right. So two more things before I go. Uh, one, even with all of these other preventative measures in place to eliminate any odors, um, you're still going to probably want to replace that milk jug at least once every two weeks, if not every week. And you'll know when it's time. Um, it'll get really scaly, really gross, and nothing you're doing is going to help that smell. So that is one recommendation for sure. And to eliminate that smell again, putting a little bit of that gray water odor control in before using it uh, a couple tablespoons i've heard works wonders and don't take my word for it but i believe it is biodegradable it should be fine it's good to go with gray tanks not black tanks so you should be able to dump that um, anywhere that you were planning to dump it as well um, again just checking in with your local restrictions uh, wherever you are at but if i'm wrong um, someone absolutely blow me up in the comments uh, that's what the comments are for, right? So speaking of those comments, let's try to open up some good dialogue there. If you have an expertise, please share it. Uh, if anything that we did is completely wrong, let us hear about it. And let's try to find that perfect solution, that creative solution for all of our shared problems. Um, with that, that's about all I've got for today, guys. I will see you on the next Bus Build Breakdowns and best of luck on your builds.